As always, on All Ages of Geek TV, I am drinking my feelings. Mm. Well, hello guys, and welcome back to All Ages of Geek TV, Ag TV, Agonizing TV, whatever you want to call it. And just to let you guys know, I just recently reacted to My Hero Academia, episode number two, so if you want to see the reaction, be sure to check it in the link in the description down below, and stick around because this is going to be my review and discussion about the entire episode. Just get ready for a lot of emotion because this one was a punch in the gut. So first of all, I love the feeling of how how All Might when he like when you saw it in that moment. So I love in this in the sense that it's showing us that even heroes, you know, even if they feel useless and they feel at this moment that they are overwhelmed with uselessness. Like throughout the entire episode, he was calling himself All Might was calling himself pathetic. Pathetic. And not a lot of people end up calling themselves pathetic unless they really, really mean it and if it's like the whole self-esteem thing. So what I also loved about learning about All Might is how he said his respiratory system was not working. He had an operation. Now that could be a, like so relatable to people in real life. They could feel helpless. They feel like they can't do anything due to an operation, due to a sickness, due to something out there. So a lot of people can take this as an example from this entire episode and say, wow, All Might, the greatest hero of all time from My Hero Academia, he is even going through something. And at that moment when he saw Deku charge in, he felt like he wasn't pathetic anymore. In the beginning, it felt like Deku was still, like when he even says throughout the whole episode, well, it's time to go and give up my, my, my entire dreams. It's like, let's just give up. Now, when you're that young and you're that insecure, the world is basically against you. And this is kind of like a coming of age story. This is 100% based on this alone, based on how the direction that it is going, it is a coming of age story, which I, love, which I absolutely love because young adult novels, young adult stories are my absolutely favorites. To see these characters develop over time based on their own doubts, to see how they're going to grow, that is something I'm always looking forward to. So with Deku in general, the entire episode, it was self-doubt. He was self-doubting his entire like entire being. Episode number one wasn't as self-doubting, but episode two, you, show, you showed the side of him. You felt that. You heard him cry. You felt him when he was just walking in the street and you saw that facial expression. That was utter self-doubt. And we all feel that sometimes. And sometimes it feels like we, we, in general, we have to doubt ourselves because everybody in our lives are saying, you can't do this, or it is impossible for you to do that. To give you an example in my own life, I've been there, I've done that. People have said that to me many, many times. I didn't go to college. I didn't do certain things that a lot of my relatives wanted me to do. But at the same time, I ended up doing what I wanted to do and what was best for me and my type of education that I want to go for because it was the right direction for me. And again, I had a great support system, but at the same time, there's a lot of people who don't have that support system. And if you don't have that support system and if you want to still go for those dreams, just know that we are here to cheer you on. You know, there's th things in my life too where I feel as if, I want to reach certain goals. Like with All Ages of Geek TV and All Ages of Geek in general, we want to reach so many goals, so many goals out there. But sometimes it feels impossible. Sometimes it feels as if we're not big enough or we're not well known enough or in this or that. And there's doubts. There's one day that I had, like recently too, that it just swarmed over me with self doubt. And, and it was like pitiful to see myself like that. It, and it was, I get in these moods sometimes where I'm like, maybe I should just give everything up. But in reality, I am just reminded over and over again the reason I am doing this is because I want to make people laugh and I want people to have positivity in their favorite fandoms. The whole thing with fandom positivity and everything if we weren't here to do this there would be like a percentage less of positivity for other people out there for fandoms and that would be like a, such a guilt thing to hold over my head that I would have quit and what would have happened. So many people who love our content or who is part of this community they'd be upset and I can never let that happen but at the same time what gives me the these types of reminders is the mindset of having a dream. When you have a goal, when you're in these moments in your mind, you have this fire that burns within you, this fire in your heart that grows and grows, but it's not the bad fire. It's not an over consuming fire. It's a type of fire that grows within your heart that will lead you forward. It's feeling as if your soul is burning and your passions are just there and they want to grow farther and farther to reach those goals. And it's kind of like the anticipation 
If you think about it, like think about with Christmas or any holiday that you do celebrate, that you feel as if like, wow, we're not there yet, but the anticipation of the growing and growing and growing, that is what makes the excitement there. So when you're on this journey of making something for yourself, don't ever feel doubtful, don't ever feel small, don't ever feel like you're the smallest fish in the sea. Because the truth is, my friends, is that even though you may feel that sometimes, that you are that smallest fish, or you may be the smallest in the pond where everybody is huge, just like with Deku, there are moments that you can only do and there's only a few things that you can do that other people can't. There's only one you in this world and the world needs you to be that superhero. The world needs you to shine a light on other people's lives. And the thing is, and the fact, the fact is you gotta take that fire and you gotta keep building it and making it grow stronger and stronger. No matter if you feel pathetic, no matter if you feel like you're down in the dumpster and down on your wits and you're, you're down on your hands and knees or anything, no matter what, you have to feel as if you could get these things done and make things, these things happen for not even just yourself, but so many people in your lives, the people that are cheering you on, the people that are there for you. Even if it is just yourself to begin with, you will find people that will support you. And I cannot wait to see who those people are for Deku. So that's what I really took away from this episode in a sense. It's like, even though you may feel as if you are a nobody, even though you may feel as if eh, the world is just going against you and everything is just swarming over you and you have self-doubt. There's gonna be those moments where only you can push yourself forward because he jumped into that. He jumped into battle, he didn't think. And what really got to me, what truthfully gave me the tears in that episode was when All Might said, there's one truth and one truth only. Heroes just go in. They don't think, they go. They go by their instincts and they go to help other people. And I could feel that on a personal level that sometimes I don't think due to my ADHD mind of how crazy it could be and how like spontaneous it could be that you just don't think and you just do when you follow your heart and you follow your instincts. And we as human beings, we best be following our instincts. We best be feeling what is right in our lives because that is the one strong truth about all of this, my friends, is that you may feel like a weakling, but if you follow your heart and you go into the battle and you go into the viciousness that is in your life, that is just tearing you down, something that is so scary and you face your fears with feeling as if you have nothing to protect you and you go in there facing your fears, you will truly be a hero and you will be one step closer to fulfilling your dream because you say to yourself that even though you may not have the abilities that everybody else may have, you have something else and you have courage and you have a dream. And once you mix those two things together, there is nothing that can stop you from moving forward. There is nothing that could stop you from doing what you love. Because the fact is, my friends, is you have the ability to do great things. It's just you have to overcome those obstacles in your life, just like Deku did just like he did when he ran into those into, into the flames. Just when he ran into it and was literally afraid. You saw the expression on his face. You saw that expression. He was in tears. He was, he was cringing at this moment, just running, his arms flailing over, around the place, his backpack, ex, like just throwing things at the bad guy, just throwing things at him, not even knowing what he's doing, just following his heart and his instincts and remembering his studies that he himself taught himself. So at that ending, it was such a powerful ending because we'll get to Kachan later on. We'll talk about him, but we're going to talk about Deku right now. In that moment when he, you feel it, you felt that, okay? He grabs his, his hand and brings it to his chest and bends over as if he is knowing that when people doubted him, even with his mother, his mother, instead of saying, you know, go around, don't, don't say, you know, this is the thing. His mother, instead of saying, you could still be a hero, and instead of saying, don't listen to people, and don't listen to that doctor, instead of her saying that to him, she said, I'm sorry. He didn't want to hear that. You know, he wanted to hear that he could, that there was a possibility that even though he doesn't have a quirk, that he can still be a hero. And as, as a parent, she should have said that instead, instead of, in a way, giving up on her son and listening to a doctor. Because yes, the doctor was medically trained for this. Yes, he probably had an education to train himself for this. But sometimes that could be wrong because miracles can happen, but so can your true willpower. And I feel as if Deku's whole character development is not, only, not even just gonna be based on willpower, but it's gonna be based on hope. 
And hope is such a strong thing to have. So long as you have faith and you have hope, you can move forward and you can do anything. You can move mountains with the power of hope. And you can do great things as long as you hold on to that strand of hope. Even when everything else may feel as all is lost, as as we saw in episode two, and this is just episode two, and we're learning so much already from this. Even though all hope was lost, he still had hope. He didn't give up, but at that moment, he was having self-doubt in a way because he was saying, time to give up my dreams, time to do this and that. But no, he had hope, and he did not give up. And as so long as you do not give up, and so long as you have patience and belief and faith in yourself and your dreams, anything can be possible. Anything. Trust me, I'm an example of that. I'm never going to give up on my dreams. There's going to be hard days. There's going to be days that are easy. There's going to be days that are so challenging that it's, it's going to test my perseverance because all the pains that you go through in life will build up that perseverance, that will build up that character, will make you stronger to the person who you are meant to become. And Deku being this small, timid, mousy character, to see him grow from probably this character who is so scared of everything in life to somebody who would be the world's greatest hero, I can't wait to see that happen. But what I loved is how All Might said he was wrong, you know? He said he was wrong. And he admitted to himself. And because at the end, he didn't have to do that. He did not have to do that. But he did. And he said he was inspired by him. So for All Might, the world's greatest hero, Deku's hero, to say that to him, like that would be me with John Tron. If I ever met John Tron and if John Tron ever said anything about, oh, I like your content or anything, that would be me crying my eyes out because I'd be like, you are my hero. So to see that, to see that happen, To see that happen in that moment, to see him crumble to the ground, that is true emotion and that is true storytelling. So about Kachan, I don't necessarily think that he was basically saying, oh, you're a pest, oh, I hate you, nyam, 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 at the ending. I think in a way the boy does not know how to say thank you. And instead of saying, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not a charity, charity case for you. Oh, I don't need to be saved by a pest and a weakling and a quirkless freak like you. I think that was his way of saying thank you. Because the boy's angsty, the boy's a teenager, but the boy's also hot-headed. I mean, his, his quirk itself basically says hot-headed, and he's branded with the hot-head type of thing, you know? So I think the boy is basically just a hot-headed in general, but I don't think that he is, he meant to be, like, like being mean to him again. I don't think he's going to be a bully all the time to him, and to see the development between the relationship grow and grow and grow as the episodes move forward, I can't wait to see that. Because the reasoning that I'm thinking this is because he didn't have to follow him back. He could have easily waited to go in school the next day and be like, oh, you're a free girl, you don't have to do that. But he followed him. So I think that is his way of saying thank you because there's always those types of people in life who do not know how to express themselves. And that's okay. So he's that hothead. He's kind of a sundry, if you think about it. The typical type of character who's going to be like, no, I don't mean what I'm saying, but thank you anyway. And then he marches off. So even Deku's face was just kind of like confused. He wasn't crying or anything like that. So hopefully we'll be able to see like their friendship grow over time, whether it's friendship or mutual respect for each other. That's something I'm very excited for. But again, I understand him as a character. I'm not gonna just throw hate or throw fists at Kachan. I'm not gonna be like, he's just he's just a stupid character who's a bully. No, there's a reason that he is like that. There's probably a reason either he's treated at home differently or he's bullied by somebody else or he's just jealous and his jealousy is just taking over him or he doesn't understand Deku because sometimes when people are mean or being haters, they just don't understand a person in general. So they're gonna throw fists. They're gonna go throw fists of fury of hate. And it's just a very overly common type of thing where it happens to everybody and like everyone out there and we all have bullies we've all been through bullying before but now that we're older you always think back why did my bully treat me like that why did that happen so i want to know do you guys agree with my statements about this do you think that he's just an angsty boy was that his way of showing appreciation but not even knowing how i i cannot wait to see who he is when he is growing up he's probably going to have a lot of character development too because he's been in episode one and two and hopefully down the line we're going to meet even more characters who will develop with deku's story 
One thing I do love about this, since it is already episode two, I usually give myself up to episode two or three to really judge a series and to really critique it. I love how this doesn't just focus on Deku. Deku may be the main character, who is the main protagonist, who is go it's going to follow him. It is a shonen type of anime, so obviously we're gonna get some shonen tropes here and there, but I feel as if this could be much more original than a typical type of shonen anime. It's not gonna just be like, I fight for my friends. It's gonna be more of a character-driven story that is all about all the characters. So that's something I am looking forward to personally because I just I love to be able to pick apart who my favorite character will be like to do character an an analysis about that. So I'm glad that we were able to discuss this. We're going to have discussions on My Hero Academia every single week. And again, the reaction, if you guys would like to tune into it, it is on the All Ages Geek Hub. So you guys don't miss out on that as well, because this way we're avoiding copyright issues. But we also get to talk about this long form with each other and talk about points that we may have missed during the reaction. But I would love to know your thoughts. What do you think about episode two of My Hero Academia? I can't wait to catch up to the whole entire season. Uh, for each of the seasons, we're going to go from My Hero Academia. And then after My Hero Academia, we're going to go to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And after that season is done, we're going to go back to My Hero Academia, so on and so forth. But anyway, my friends, I hope you have an amazing day. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below. And to, yeah, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. Because if you don't, then you're going to miss out on episodes here on the channel. I haven't said that in a while, but I'm going to start saying that again. And if you really, really want to help support us, please help us support us on Patreon. Our Patreon link is in the description down below where you guys can get early access to not only reactions, but also discussions as well. But anyway, my friends, I hope you have an amazing day. You stay safe out there. You stay weird. You stay wonderful. You stay awesome, my friends. And until the next video, embrace your fangirl and you're a fanboy every single day. Bye, guys.